Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2011 World Juggling Federation Freestyle Battle. In just a few moments, you're going to see some of the most difficult juggling moves ever attempted. We're taking the risk factor up several notches from what we saw in the short programs. Get ready for the WJF Freestyle Battle starting now. Live from Springfield, Illinois, it's the World Juggling Federation Freestyle Battle on ESPN3. The dress code is freestyle. The rules are street rules. Make it, take it, or crash and burn. Forget about deductions. Don't be afraid to drop. This is about those special moments when the competitors land their Snuffleupagus tricks. The tricks we've all heard about, but no one has ever seen live. Now it's their chance to show the extreme limits of their abilities, pushing themselves farther than they would ever dare in any critically scrutinized short program routine. No uniforms, no routine forms, no belligerent beejering. We're dragging these freestyle jugglers off the street and into our freestyle battle arena for the most intense, electrifying, temerarious display of edge of your seat juggling intensity. This is the World Juggling Federation Freestyle Battle! First up, for the five ball freestyle competition, please welcome Ivan Benjaminson, Doug Sayers, and Jack Tencher. As we can see, Quick change by all three of these competitors. Hey, going. Hold on a second. Starting with Lauga Benjaminson again here. Now we're going to see some really amazing things here. Look at that. That was a uh, 97531 with a uh, 720 underneath it. As the throws go higher, uh, the numbers change, but just to keep it simple, we'll call it a 97531. There's that 50360 to back crosses. Doug Sayers pulling off the first trick. Oh, not even done yet. Connecting to a 50360. So Sayers, obviously, after uh, winning the clubs competition in the zone right now, is he's really been able to establish himself here in this freestyle battle. He's racking up the points and the pressure is really off of them in this competition because they get uh, multiple tries. Uh, so, you know, a drop doesn't count against you. He just doesn't get any points, but it's not like they're uh, accruing deductions for making mistakes. It's whoever can pull off pretty much the biggest trick. The biggest and best, yeah, the baddest trick. And uh, this competition is scored based off of originality and difficulty. So it's not enough to do an incredibly difficult move. You have to have, uh, you have to bring something new to the table in addition to that. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that just because it's new and original that it's gonna win. We don't want new, original, and easy. We want, you know, all the elements, including difficulty. Oh, couple, he got it, 720. Say, a couple of rafter blasters right there. He I felt a win from that one. <laughs> he got some height on those throws right there, Laga Benjaminson. What Doug's got planned here. This is a really innovative side swap connection there. And you can tell with the freestyle due to the fact that, you know, they're in their more, you know, everyday type of clothes or whatever. It's not as short. The short program is more technically sound. This is go big or go home, basically, when it exactly. comes to the freestyle program. Exactly. There's uh, there's only uh, there's only one rule, really. Oh, look at that. That's a 1080 under all three balls. I almost got it. Really, I really do think he's traveling back in time just a little bit when he does that. <laughs> There's a uh, three up, uh, three up, 360 into what was going to be a reverse shoulder throws where the balls go over your shoulder and you catch them behind you almost blind. One eye, four low, 720. Very close on that one. one. One ball thrown almost to the ceiling and the other four balls thrown high enough to fit two spins underneath it. Now I'm sure we're going to see at least three spins in whatever he does here. Yep, that's a oh. 975 pattern with a 1080 underneath it. So now the in the freestyle competition, the short program you had two minutes, and the freestyle is at a certain number of rounds or mostly minutes that they're competing in the... They go by number of attempts, and okay. in the five ball, it's five attempts. We will see 10 attempts as this progresses to the five wow. club freestyle competition. There it goes again, one high, four low. Uh, very close, though. There you have the five ball freestyle competition contented. I don't know about you, Jason. It looked to me that 
Doug may have taken that one home. What are the judges looking? Obviously, they're looking for the one big trick, but it, there's so much going on and con consistently di different guys coming in and out. Uh, the judges really have to pay a really close attention to all that's transpiring. They definitely, all they have to do is, actually for them, it's very simple. All they have to do is make sure that, well, they just have to find out who pulled off the moves and then rate those moves in up against each other, place, which they should have, have done Lauga in prelims. Benjamin and see, you see in right there. second place, we have Jack Denger. Lauga Benjamin and in first Sid, place, we have Doug Sayers. Doug Sayers. So actually, so Doug, got Doug Sayers, back to back now for Doug. Very impressive. Now we are into the, is this the six ball Six now? ball freestyle. freestyle competition. Now six balls, if you notice from the front, uh, they are not crossing normally. Six balls is done by juggling three balls in each hand at the same time. Like I was saying before, odd numbers cross, even numbers don't cross. But then there's, we call this the wimpy pattern. That's when they cross uh, in an in a, uh, even number pattern uh, and synchronize at the same time. We'll see David do that again later. It's when you're throwing with both hands at the same time and crossing. But you see Jack is doing the traditional three in each hand. Trying a side swap uh, pattern there, not getting it. Doug Sayers, once again, very busy here tonight. For a why he's going. Yeah, into a shower pattern. Nice control. That's a six ball shower. That's very difficult to control. The speed required for that to keep those throws consistent. You know, the faster you have to throw, the less accurate, in theory, uh, you are. Does that wimpy pattern into a four up multiplex? I don't even know what that was supposed to be. They just went in every different direction. I, I couldn't see a coherent pattern out of that one. Well, sometimes you're talking about in the in the freestyle, you have kind of an idea of what you want to do going in, but you get in the middle of that ring, and all of a sudden something strikes you, and you want to go big because you know that's where you get the biggest points. Yeah, and especially if you've already landed the tricks that you intended on landing, then it's you got a few more tries. Why not go for something bigger? And Doug there going for a six up 360 in the, uh, the most difficult pattern, the async, a non crossing pattern. You can tell he was not happy with that attempt there. Yeah, obviously, he may try to come back to that one to pull it off because obviously, the look in his eyes, but he was going to be able to. Oh, <laughs> Furman almost had it Just there for a second. Just about got that. He might have, and in the freestyle, the, like I said, the drops don't count against you, so it's really up to the judges to determine if you accomplished enough of the move to get the, the credit for it. Uh, so even though you may see competitors dropping at the end of these routines, they might have accomplished enough before that happens to get the score for it. So Sayers, once again, you can just see how intense he is. He's going for something big. There's that six up. Now that, that is extremely difficult. In a, a non-crossing pattern, you have a very small window, a very small hallway to fit those, those balls on either side of your body or they will hit, hit each other. They have to be slightly oh. arced out to the side. Furman, that one got a little bit away from him there. He's going for the same thing every yes. time. He starts in the wimpy pattern, goes into a four at multiplex, trying to connect to a high-low shower pattern. The young man from Indiana, Denger, right Final there, round. having a little bit of difficulty. Final round, one more try for each of them. So Doug Sayers going. has already hit one big one, so look for him to start to hit yeah. something huge right here. Yeah, and also, once they start hitting them, the easier it is for them because they've already accomplished what they yes. came out to do and no pressure at this point. Right. Here we go, Wimpy. There's the Wimpy. There's a, oh, six up in Wimpy into a, a B97531. So Got two things up until he was yes. connecting three things together. Uh, the judges have to weigh that and determine if that's enough for him to uh, be eligible for any sort of placement. So Jack accomplished his side swap connection there. As you see, uh, Doug Sayers, Sayers giving his fellow competitor a round of applause. A lot of camaraderie here. I guess they're competing against each other, but whenever I've been around this week, when I've come in to, to talk to you, Jason, and check out different things, there's always a camaraderie of these guys. Yes, it's a competition, but they're trying to have fun, and I think that's how and why we see them pushing the limits, because they push each other in a friendly, combative type of way. Once again, Sayers looked very impressive there uh, through that run, but Furman threw a couple tricks in there as well, so this may be a tough one for the judges to, to figure right, out. And, and even though Doug had great control, I don't think... Uh that's going to really make a difference in this because this is freestyle. It doesn't matter if you do it well. It just matters in if you do it or not. Place, we have Dak Ginger. In second place, we have David Furman. So David Furman second. And in first place, we have Doug Sayers. Doug, Doug Sayers, Sayers, you predicted it this time. You're learning. <laughs> continuing <laughs> to roll. Now, moving on to the seven, seven, ball, seven ball freestyle competition. Well, and obviously you talked about how Benjaminson going for the overall championship. He's seen now Sayers get three first place finishes. So obviously Benjamin's gonna, Benjaminson's going to want to come back. He got one early on as we kicked off the broadcast. So let's see if Benjaminson can pick up his second here in the seven ball freestyle competition. Oh, look at that. Just juggling seven balls. I mean, look at that's a lot of balls to control there. You know, most people is. are just happy to be able to get that going, but not to do these tricks. And Furman has 
a huge arsenal of seven ball moves. It's really just choosing which one. He's starting off, he was, like, he was trying to connect a 5-up 360 into 9-6-6, which is the seven ball version of the 7-4-4 we were watching earlier. 5-up 360 into seven balls. You know, that used to be a big, amazing move right there, the 5-up 360 out of seven balls, and now so many people are doing it. It's still just as difficult to do, uh, but just more people are better now, so it's more common. It doesn't get the kind of reaction as it used to, but the seven ball 7-up 360, as Dove just demonstrated there, still very Say few people are doing that. Sayers is, you know, talk about other sports, you know, sometimes Michael Jordan, would you would see him, everything he put up was going in, being in the zone, Sayer seems in the zone right now. He seems to be hitting them all, yeah. There's a DB97531. Oh, didn't didn't qualify it, uh, but this isn't uh, a qualification kind of competition, so I believe he did make all the catches of, of the throws. That might be eligible for placement. Still going for that 50360 into 966, but not getting it that time. Jack Denger. Now he completed his 5-up uh, 360 earlier. We got something else to do. Yeah, one high, four low, and yeah. He definitely got that one in. I would say that that is, uh, that may put him in the lead for this one. Uh, that may be worth more than uh, than Doug 7-up 360, because although it was more balls up, with he's going for DB97531, to a collect, that's a tough one. This is close. Uh, Jack's got two really good ones. Doug's got two really good ones. Oh, look at Benjamin oh, sitting right there. Throws. Oh, that's that's another good one. Uh, all right, at this point, I do not want to be in the judges' <laughs> you know, seat. I don't want to. I don't want to have to figure this one out. And that's what we talked about: the pushing each other to the limit. You know, Sayers pulls off a big trick, thinks he may be in the clear, and next thing you know, Denger pulls one off, and now Benjamin sees, Benjaminson yeah. sees both those guys have put a big spot on the board, so he comes it, brings it with all he's got. And there may be an exchange of pressure as they, they yes. pull off their moves and then someone else, look at that, that's another one yes. pulled off it into an 8x6 pattern. The seven and ball, you can, and you can see the in the fist face pump, there, yeah. yeah. The fist pump there by Denger, he knew he hit that one out of the park. This is probably the, the best display in a seven ball freestyle competition that I've ever seen. Uh, the, the, I mean, most of the time you're lucky to see just one of those moves hit and they're the ones that shine. And now we've got like five or six moves that are incredibly difficult, all pulled off within the same uh, the same competition. And it, it might have something to do with them all pulling them off. I mean, I think they might be actually motivating each other at this point. Yes. The exact opposite effect that we saw in the short program. Let's see yes. if Herman's going to land his move here. Going to a five up, same move. Yeah. You mentioned it there, Jason. In the short program, we saw once the bar was set, the pressure becomes on. And in this one, Nick, you said it's the exact opposite. When you see it's a more fellow of a battle, you know, yes. it's kind of like, okay, all right. Now I got to step up my that? game. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, Danger. that was a five up seven twenty attempt. But at this point, you know, it's like make it, make it, take it, or you know, either way, he's got something in there. He's got several in there. Yeah, already. they've yeah, they've already really hit the big one, so now yeah. it's really pushing yourself to the utmost level, knowing you've already hit a huge trick. Final round here. Let's see who gets uh, their last attempt on a DB9. Oh, two connected DB9, 7, 5, 3, wow. Oh. Oh. Yeah, if he had kicked that last <laughs> ball and it had gone up and he caught it, that would have counted, I'm pretty sure. I was going to say, that would have led to some big points right there. 5 up 360 into... Uh, and Furman well, comes out okay. strong right there in the final round. Collected. Uh, it was hard to tell if that was a 966 pattern or an 8x6 pattern. Uh, it was kind of fluctuating between sync and async. Is that 5 up 720 again? Collisions and drops doesn't get that one. All right, so this attempt appears to be the final round here, so Sayers may be the last competitor here. Let's see last what he one. can do. This will be the last seven ball move we see tonight. He's building up for something big. Just look at the concentration on his face. 7 up 360 into, uh, he went into a side swap, didn't do it long enough to tell what that was. That was still a heated competition, like you said, Jason. That one, uh, I do not envy the judges there. We saw some excellent seven ball freestyle juggling right there. I mean, we saw some huge tricks pulled off, and you even mentioned it. Some of them chained into another trick back to back, especially with Denger right there. Yeah, and uh, Lauga Benjaminson can, trying to connect two DB9753 together. Jen That's demonstrating the skill from both sides of his hands. Lauga Benjaminson in third place. But getting third place for Lauga. For second place, we had Doug Sayers. Doug and for second. first place, we have Jack Denger. Jack Denger gets first place. The young man from Indiana. 
I think he might have been the dark horse in that competition. Definitely. I didn't expect that. I expected maybe Doug to get that or Lauga. Well, and Doug was on a Doug was on a roll in that uh, competition. He he had won the five and the six, and you thought going in the seven, he was the first one to really pull off the big trick. And so for that, we have uh, Lauga Benjamin's in third, Doug Sayer second, and Jack Denger was in first place. When we come back, we'll have the three ball freestyle competition. That's when things get really crazy. So definitely want to stick around for that. Welcome back to the 2011 World Juggling Federation Freestyle Battle. We just wrapped up the seven ball freestyle with Jack Denger finishing in first place. So now we're going to go to the three ball freestyle competition. Everyone starts juggling with three balls, but very few people take three ball juggling skill level comparable with nine ball juggling skill. Yes, you can do moves with three balls that are just as complicated, if not more so, as uh, juggling nine balls. So This is like a completely different kind of uh, uh, juggling competition right here, the three ball. They get one minute now to demonstrate as many moves as possible to fit this in. You can tell right here the style is completely different. I mean, you only have three balls, so there's so much more that you can do. Check that out, juggling behind the back, lot line. A lot of sleight of hand there by Furman. Nice connections. Passes behind the back, blind catches. And look at that, a drop, and he still tries to incorporate yeah, it into the routine. Just throw the other two higher, pick it up, and keep going. As long as you pick it up before the highest ball comes down, it's good. I meant to do that. It's all part of, right, right, all part right. of the routine. I incorporated that <laughs> drop just to show you I could pick it back up. So Furman showing a quite array of skill right there. Very short, concise patterns, as well as going big from time to time, combining that with behind the back. He caught one in the back of his neck as well. Now a oh, kip, kip up. up. Nice. Oh, he got it. And a big there flourish at the end there. And, and a little pose Furman. at the end there. David Furman, an excellent routine right there. Once again, showing his ability to bounce back from that drop. And like I said, it almost like he was part of the routine. He was right yeah. on top of it. He definitely was amped up for that one. There was an energy level that you see in the... Uh, Three ball freestyle competition. Next up is the three ball competition. That's going to be a different kind of uh, three ball routine here with Will Silvers. Uh, he's got different moves than we've seen with Furman. He's not uh, as athletic with it, uh, but everything is really tight and controlled and really fast uh, passes that you might not even catch. He's a so look really close. Silvers, a 14 year old from Cumberland, Maine. Yeah, very tight patterns for Silvers. You want to you want to watch really close here at his hands and the balls. See all these looping movements with his, uh, his hands over the throws. I, I would never want to play three card Monty with <laughs> Silvers. He'd get you every time with that quick hands that he's got right there. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you really can't tell where the throw is coming from. It looks like the balls are just bouncing up and down, and his, his hands are just swinging around him, but I don't, uh, I don't see the throw. Periodically, I see a, a, a hand open up and a ball comes out, but uh, he, for the most part, it seems like they're just going on their own. As a comic book geek, he almost looks like Magneto. And so the X-Men movies, when he has the, uh, the metal orbs around there, the way he has them kind of almost floating in space. Yeah. It's like you said, definitely a different style from what we saw from Furman just a moment ago, but still just as impressive. I would say in the theme of freestyle, I would say David was more, uh, more on with, uh, with the moves that he was doing. These were tight control patterns. It looked uh, repetitive, though, at times. And what Furman had was variety. Yeah, much more variety there for Furman than there was there for Silvers. The next competitor is one I'm going to be interested to see. He incorporates a lot of different stuff. We'll take a replay real quick of Silvers and just the, the technical skill shown right there, keeping those tight throwing patterns. Yeah, and for the most part, he kept it all together. Everything was tight and close to him. Uh, had a couple of drops in there, but for the most part, uh, looks like he uh, executed what he was trying to do. This is coming up Michael Falkoff. He is a 27-year-old from Miami, Florida, watching him warm up. He incorporates a lot of almost hacky sack type moves into right. this three ball, uh, three ball freestyle competition. Right, and that's that's probably why he's in such good cardiovascular shape because he turned juggling really into an athletic exercise. And uh, yeah, you can see a lot of hacky sack moves here. That's on the foot, incorporating that whip juggling pattern right in the behind the back there. Like you said, a lot of athleticism in this routine using every part of his body to help with the juggling process. This Falcon, oh, that's some great stuff. Uh, 
this is some serious competition for David, I and think. It's got to be very difficult oh. for the judges. There's been three so different styles in this three-ball freestyle competition. I mean, yeah. Furman had the huge tricks he pulled off, and then he had the technical moves of Silvers, and then you have pretty much a combination of dynamic and also the technical and the hacky sack variety of Falkoff here. He's really bringing everything. I love this part here. It looks like he's actually fighting the ball. When he's <laughs> yes. his arms back. You don't want to be near him when he's practicing this stuff. You'll get knocked out. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. That is, oh, that is rare to see a correction <laughs> like that. That usually goes 50 feet Falcoff. away from you. Falcoff. Nice, oh, Falcoff. nice routine there by Falcoff, showing a wide array of skills right here. That's we see the time. replay. I mean, like we said, using every part of his body to, to incorporate into the actual routine. And, and he got those fists of fury going towards yeah, the end yeah. of that <laughs> as well, almost very Bruce Lee-esque as he was flying those fists around to end that routine. Yeah, and made most, just had only a couple of mistakes. Uh, I think that's In some serious competition. In third place, for, uh, we have Will Davis. Silvers. So Will Silvers. Second place, third. David Furman. David Furman in second, and Falcoff. And first place, Michael Falcoff. Michael Falcoff. So Michael Falcoff from Miami, a whirling dervish of activity using every part of his body to win it. He takes the first place in the three ball competition does Michael Falcon from Miami, and that was an impressive array of talents there by Michael Falcon. So we are done with the balls, and we're going to be moving on to the ring freestyle battles. We'll be doing that next, so we'll be right back. Welcome back to the 2011 World Juggling Federation Freestyle Battle. We're going to be moving on now to the rings, and we're going to be kicking that off with the five ring event. Uh, we've got four competitors here, Lauka Benjaminson, Jack Denger, Doug Sayers and Ben Hesnes. Ben Hesnes is a new one we haven't seen. I was going to say, we have tonight. not seen Ben Hesnes. Now, but ben is on the, uh, he is in the finals of Major League Combat. He's on Team K8. And like we mentioned, Doug Sayers will also be in Major League Combat. You'll be seeing a lot of him. He's on Team Duncan, and those right. two teams will battle out for the championship in the Major League Combat, which will be coming up here after the freestyle program. All right, now we're on the five rings here. Five up, 720 into 744, and he lands it. First try. Yeah, Benjaminson right away. Oh, pancake and, clip, and neck <laughs> catch, and he gets it. Ending bump. with a flourish there for Lauga Benjaminson. So he's got to know now he's already really ripped off a big one yeah, right there. So definitely. now he's going to be able to just let loose for the rest of this competition. So definitely. to get that first one out of the way is impressive. Yeah, we'll see uh, We'll see bigger and better things from him as this progresses. And Ben Hesnes, they're trying a uh, blind kick from behind, but not lining it up right. So another 360 in the pancake throws there. Not landing it. Jack Denger now starting off with a ring balanced on his ear collarbone and then, oh, using that as a transition to go into oh. overhead throws. Inventive, though, there, and there, there goes the ring rolling yeah, away like you mentioned. Yeah, as far away as possible. Likely the freestyle competition, not the uh, short program, so no harm, no foul right there. Exactly. Another opportunity to throw a big one. Yep. Oh, what's Lauga going to go for? Three up, 1080. Look at Lauga. Living up to his handle. I think that's good. <laughs> So Three Lauga, up, 1080. So Lauga, two for two here. Two huge tricks. I wonder what he's going to have in store as yeah, we progress. Really. He's probably going to try to throw all of them up and uh, <laughs> spin back into the short program time period. Look at the balance there by Hestis. He's going for a uh, yeah four-ring juggle with a balance on the head and passing a ring behind the head at the same time. We talk about the uh, movement of the feet to kind of show you the accuracy of their throws when you're got that one balance on your nose, you know that you're not really doing much movement whatsoever. Yeah, that's actually a function that the balance does provide, is that it, it kind of forces you to have better throws because you can't move around like you do without it. Three up seven, uh, trying to connect to overhead throws, I believe. Now those overhead throws, remember I was talking about the control you need over the clubs to make them rotate only one time. Those overhead throws require the same amount of delicate touch. Otherwise, as you notice, the first time we try to throw, you'll just throw them way out in front of you instead of, you know, gently arcing them straight up over your head. Benjamin Simmons working up for something big right there. He'll try that next time around. So Hesnes goes back to the balance to start out. See what he can transition this into. Yeah, look at the feet. They're staying right there. He's not moving hardly at all. And he got it. A couple steps back at the end, but the balance is still there. Excellent display of, of technical throwing and Combination balance of balancing well. and juggling yeah. at the same time and a uh, pass behind the, behind the head. Sayers once again trying to go for that. Look at that, where that ring went. Yes. It was headed for the crack <laughs> in between those dasher boards. I thought it might get out of the room that way. He's trying to hightail it out of here. There he goes again, Ooh. going for the overheads. 
It's incredibly difficult because yes. you have to when you're con you're connecting a move to another move. If it's in the same arm position, it's a lot easier than if you're trying to go to a different arm position, like in the overhead throws, because you have to set up that 720, those throws, to land just a little bit ahead <laughs> of you, and so you can catch them in the position you need them to be to do the next move. And there, you just called it. You were going to try to see Benjaminson throw all five of and them up in the air. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what he tried to accomplish Well, right once there. you do it with three, the next step is logically, well, let's <laughs> see if I can do it with five. Once again, Estes is trying to do the blind kick behind to keep it going. And those rings just trying to explore every possible <laughs> exit to this practice uh, competition arena. You see the pancake throws. Oh, three up three. Oh, nice connection. That was a pancake three up 360 connected to a full reverse pattern. That would have been a good connection. That would have scored well. So Denger now, the young man from Indiana. There he goes. He got it. He got the catch right there, what he was looking for. Yep, 720. And you see, overhead throws. see Lauga Benjaminson giving him a round of applause there, understanding the complexity of that maneuver. Well, what's he going to do now? I mean, I just... Oh, jeez. <laughs> he just... Oh, that was a that was a one high, four low, and I don't know how many spins. That was. A, it must have been three. If I don't know, it must have been at least three. He's coming up with things on the fly now. I can always spot two, but if I'm unsure, there was at least three. I'm not aware of him doing four. Well, he's got another chance to try that. Exactly. With the nickname like 1080, you know he can get spinning at quite the velocity. Yeah. Sayers now changing it up a little bit. Starting with the full reverse and going into a half shower. Into a 3 of 360. So Sayers now on a roll. Look at Doug Sayers. This is a good sequence. Impressive right there. Don't know if it's going to be enough to beat Benjaminson this far, but it was definitely very more tame than yes. what Blauga has been trying. Well, that may count for something. I mean, you know, if you don't drop, it's, it's under consideration. So Benjaminson once again in the middle of the circle here. So he's going to throw one high and four low, or if he's doing the same thing he did last time. One high, four low. Two spins. Oh, and he, he got it. Catch. One high four low, 720. Look at that. And the ben pancake. <laughs> so Benjaminson just outdoing himself as he goes throughout this five ring freestyle competition. It's really the Benjaminson battle at this point. He's just trying to one up himself every time he needs. He's accomplishing it. Well, there's three versions of himself <laughs> that he's competing against now. Sayers has thrown in some good ones as well, but yeah, Benjaminson has really been the star of this freestyle competition thus far. And you can tell from the audience reaction which ones are landing the more impressive move, hence, you know, the, the most difficult and the most original. Sayers giving a nod to the audience saying, hey, what I just did there was pretty difficult. Give me a little bit of love here. I may, I may be a little ahead of you guys on this. <laughs> Let me uh, be the first to tell you that was hard. So what does Benjaminson have in store right here? You know, he just caught it around now. Just, well, let's see. Uh, he's <laughs> going for a 5 up 10 8. Why not? He was going for broke right there. He That's is. when you'll see that is when it really doesn't matter at this point. He's got so many under his belt now that we may see the impossible. Uh, and Heston is still trying to get that back kick. That's yeah. got to be extreme. I mean, it's difficult enough to catch those things. Let alone hit the back of the heel yeah. and still get it in a pattern. Yeah, and I don't know what's supposed to happen after that, but... Uh, that is a very risky move. This goes the pancake. Oh, he's going for that one again. The pancake 360 into the full reverse. Just, Sayers is trying to show a little bit of everything going in back that maneuver forth, right yeah. there. Doing something he can do, something he maybe can do. It's a smart strategy to uh, get your composure back. Dendra also pulling off a relatively safe move, but uh, maybe uh, emotionally that'll help prepare him for the next attempt. All right, so Benjamin's in here. We've got to be getting closer to one of the, the final rounds here. Look at that 6x4 pattern. He's feeling it right now. You can just tell he's got the he's got the swagger going on as he wants back to the end of the line here. We just keep seeing more and more. You know, this, the, the difficulty now, keeps on going up. Oh, he's trying to kick that, I think. He's trying to kick that back up. I thought at first he was trying to trap it there and do something, but uh, I think he's trying to kick it off the back of the heel and keep that in a pattern. Right, he keeps on getting, I'm not sure if that kick is supposed to happen on the inside of the ring or the outside of the ring, but right now he's landing on the inside. There he goes again. Oh, Sayers really that. trying to incorporate all the different throwing patterns, the pancakes, and the 360 in there as well, trying to really chain those tricks together. This hasn't worked out for him thus far in this competition. 
Oh, Jack now going for a 1080, realizing uh, 720 isn't going to cut it in this competition. He's got to uh, kick it up a bit into the 1080s. And you notice he stopped after that 720 a little bit and then pushed off again to get that last one. When Lauga does his 1080s, it's just a Tasmanian devil out there, just a whirlwind. That's a great analogy. He does look like there a Tasmanian de yep. devil. And there's a, because of the unruliness of those rings, you never know where they're going to bounce, but if there's a way he could incorporate the bounce into the routine, I'm sure, oh, yeah, I'm sure Benjamin Sin would. Yeah, would I meant to do that. That, is a, that was my connection from the floor back up. And that has happened before. You'll see it. You know, every now and then a ring hits the floor just right. It'll bounce back into the pattern, or even with the clubs, which is even more rare. The club will hit the floor just right, bounce back up, and you can continue on. Act like you meant to do it, although if it's in a short program, they know better. Yes. They know you didn't mean to do that. But in the freestyle, who knows? Freestyle, you can never can tell because that's where the creativity really shines through. And that's, I imagine, Jason, that's where new tricks are formed as well, sometimes right on the spot. Well, especially considering that originality is a big part of yes. this competition. They're encouraged to create new moves. So Benjaminson now, this is the final round, and Benjaminson already has three or four tricks under his belt, so he can let it all hang out right here on this last attempt. Five up, 1080. Um, Almost got all that but one. one. and Well, two, I guess. And now one is rolling out the door for, Lo <laughs> for Loga Benjaminson. So Hess is now going to go with the balancing act once again. Ring was headed to the concession stand, I think. Well, after all the work Benjaminson's put him through, it deserves a little bit of a break. Oh, nice. Oh, that was a nice combination there going from a balanced right, though. I mean, it's in the perfect position to naturally go into overhead throws. Now, with Hessness, too, this is the first time we've seen him. It's got to be much more difficult for him. Benjaminson, Denger, and Sayers have already been in a lot of competition, so their muscles are all warmed up properly. Hessness kind of coming in a little bit cold in this competition. It's got to be difficult. Well, they are all warming up. I mean, right. they're constantly juggling. If they're not out there juggling, you know, everyone that you saw before, they're juggling somewhere in, you know, in this hall. And so uh, that's one thing about juggling is that it's something that constantly needs to be kept warm. Uh, anytime you see a juggler, a good juggler performing or competing, there's a good chance that the last time they juggled was just a minute ago or less. That's a five, five ring a freestyle competition right there. And I mean, so if we take a look at the, there's so much to replay yeah. and to talk about here. In third I place, we have Jack Denger. So Jack Denger. Second place, Ben Hestness. And in first place, first place, Lauga of Benjaminson. Course. First yeah. place, first place, and first place, <laughs> Lauga <laughs> Benjaminson. Exactly. He could have gotten all three right there as he pulled on some huge tricks in the five ring freestyle. So Lauga Benjaminson adds another first place to his resume so far here tonight in the World Juggling Federation Championships. So we've seen some incredibly impressive world class juggling with balls and rings. We're going to be back with the best that the world has to offer in the World Juggling Federation Club Freestyle Battles. It is going to blow your mind, and we'll be back with that next. Welcome back to the 2011 World Juggling Federation Freestyle Battle. And coming up next is the Five Club event. And this is where we're going to see Bova Galchenko at his finest. As good as the seven ball freestyle and uh, the six ring and seven, really all the freestyle events were amazing. But this is what I've been looking forward to all night. Uh, Bova Galchenko, Lauga Benjamins and Ben Hesnes and Jack Levy. You're going to see some amazing five club juggling here. And uh, really the club control that Bova has, I'd, I'd say that gives him a huge advantage over everybody else. If you were, if you're going to be a betting man, in this one early on, would you say Benjaminson and Galchenko would be the two to really I, watch I in this one? I would, definitely. Although you have to factor in Vova's nerves a little bit, but yes. in the freestyle, I think that's a little uh, subdued a little bit. I think he'll do fine in this. Jack Levy going for a three up, 720. Oh, <laughs> just, you know, they get to a point where they, they know, I just have to not drop, <laughs> just get them all. And just see this huge like garbage collecting effort. Now, Hestis finished second in this six-ring freestyle, so he's got to be feeling pretty good about himself. He's going uh, He's going for a one-high four-shoulder throw under the one-high and then back into the pattern. The human spin cycle right here. Yeah. Lauga Benjaminson. Here's that kick up into the four-up, multiplex into a 9 oh. 7 5 three, one. You could tell right away he just had a little bit of uh, difficulty with the transfer there. What's the problem yeah. in that? Same thing as with the rings. Now, Bubba's going for a five-up 360, all in singles. I mentioned before the control. Look at that. He landed it. We've all seen him do that before. It's not original at this point, but that does not take away the difficulty. Almost nobody here, or really in the world, can do that. Maybe a few. 
but he's the only one I've ever seen do that in competition. And Jack collects his garbage after say. the three up 720. So Levi, credit for that. The dark horse kind of coming up with a big trick right there. Now watch these shoulder throws. This is the first time we've seen shoulder throws with clubs. His technique is a little odd. He's not using any of his arm. He's using mostly all wrist to throw the shoulder throws, which wow. does make it look a little dainty. <laughs> Benjamin's in, but no less difficult at that point. Here he's just going for a 975-31. Oh, connected to a 360. Almost had that one. Galchenko now. I think Galchenko is working up for something bigger. He's, he's building trying to up, get I some. Think, yeah. he's, got, he's got a huge trick in there already, right. although not original. The difficulty of that, I, I still think, puts him ahead. Now, that is original. That uh, that was a, uh, it's not a 180 or a 360. It's actually a 90. Turned just a quarter of the way around and connected it straight to back crosses. To really show the audience how difficult those back crosses are. Yeah, and more impressive though, that 90, because that setup is very confusing and very awkward, and to transition that into back crosses. Levi's throwing some uh, big tricks there. Unable to convert that one though. We're gonna see some more uh, green shoulder throws. There you go, one, two, three, four shoulders. So he's going for four shoulder throws. That's almost impossible. I mean, I've, I may have seen Boba do that once, but I think boba has got bigger tricks planned. Lauga now probably going for the uh, 97531 again. I watched the hand across. He gets it that time. Maybe and connected to the 360. Oh. Like you said, we may see that a couple more times with Lauga Benjamin said like a, like a, you know, a pit bull. Continuing, he does no not take no for an that. answer. No. And he got the hand across that time, the 360 setup, what gave him struggle. Oh, no, that was two incredibly <laughs> difficult moves. <laughs> World-class moves strung together. He threw two high, uh, three high, one, two, two body throws, which is the first time we're seeing that. We'll see more of that in the three-club freestyle. But incorporating a three-club move within five clubs and a huge explosion on Jack Levy there as he tried to connect to a 360. And uh, Like you said, one missed throw. And well, it just you know, takes you, one, yeah. You try to overcompensate, next thing you know, you have even more problems on your hands. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a, interestingly, kind of yeah. interestingly awkward connection of a uh, shoulder throw and uh, kind of make it up as it up, yeah, it goes it's, along there. It seemed like improv. That's what the freestyle is all about, really. Okay, so he's doing this uh, 97531 and now three up. Uh, that Behind was going to be back. a 360, but he doesn't have control over that uh, those three up throws after oh, the uh, 97531. <laughs> those are getting away from him. That's why he recognized that this time. That's why he didn't spin. But here we go, we're gonna try those uh, two body throws again. So, too high, two body throws. <laughs> and didn't quite land that, but he's trying to connect that, I believe, to a five up 360. Well, if you'll notice too, and we may mention it at the top of the broadcast about uh, looking at the footwork. If you notice with Volvo, whenever uh, whenever he's starting Galchenko, his feet are so quiet. There's hardly yeah. any movement whatsoever. And that just shows you the accuracy of his throws. And we're talking five clubs here, that's no easy feat. Right. And most of these competitors have good control over five clubs. So that's a shoulder throw. Oh, I see. He's doing a shoulder throw, the same throw when he catches it on the other side. He's doing one overhead throw and then trying to catch that behind his back blind. And he got as far as the blind catch on that one, but then dropped on the catch. Benjamin sitting now. Predictably going for the same move. They're, oh, no. I stand corrected. He's connected to 744. Might have gotten enough of that to, to count. That was, was the, the five Levy. club freestyle as we wrap and that up. Ben Once again, I do not. I'm I'm glad we get to call the action, Jason. Don't get to judge it because yeah, there, because there's, there's, there's so much to, to, to evaluate. Galchenko has third place. Lauga Benjaminson. Second place. Jack Levy. First place. Vova Galchenko. And Vova Galchenko so. probably for that five up through sixty in singles. So Vova Galchenko. Probably the best in the world when it comes to juggling clubs. Stakes his claim and takes first place in the five club freestyle competition. So for our final event, we're taking it down to three clubs to show you the intricate and warp speed moves that can only be done with three clubs. The final event in the world juggling freestyle battle will be coming right up. Welcome back to the final event in the World Juggling Federation series of freestyle battles. The three club freestyle battle is judged just like the three ball freestyle battle in that the competitors are all allotted one minute to squeeze in as many original and difficult moves with as little rest time in between each move. And they accomplish this by connecting as many moves together as possible without any basic juggling in between each move. 
So who do we have out here first? This is Ben Thompson. Uh, this is the first time we are seeing him. But you can see, just like in the three ball freestyle competition, there's a very fast, rapid fire moves. You know, as soon as you're done with one, you're moving on to the next, and they don't last long at all. There's just a a lot of different moves going on here, a lot of different kinds of catches all connected together. What Hessness can achieve in the ring competition, though, Thompson had no problem using the old kickback with the clubs there to get that back in the pattern. Right, yeah. There's a, oh, oh. nice. I hope he tries that again and he'll pull that off. Come on. Oh, oh. oh. very good. Alternating which side I think he's catching him on there, but uh, only have one minute, so you got to. Uh, Oh, look at that. Those are back crosses that are also caught behind the back. As opposed to you know, throwing them in front and catching them in the Oh, and you know, look at that. Front roll into overhead throws while on his back. Thompson. A first look at him. We will see him in uh, Major League Combat as well coming up here next. The kick up into a balance, club on club balance. And, and that, that, that will do it for Ben Thompson. Got to end with something successful, <laughs> even if it's after time is up. Oh, here's that front roll, and stays down there. Catch, perfect catch, too. That was very well thrown. Caught right on the handle and went right into the uh, overhead throws while lying down. Thompson, a 21-year-old from a Woodbury, Ladies Minnesota. So Jack Denger will be coming out next. He's also been very busy here tonight in a Contender lot of Contender for the events. overall championship as well. At only 14 years of age as well. Amazing what some of these young competitors have accomplished here. In such a short amount of time, you said, Jason, too. Yeah, Jack himself is really surprised that he was just a couple of years ago in the juniors competition. And uh, now last year he was in intermediates, and now he's in advanced. And doing quite well for himself in the advanced competition. Yeah. Look at these fast connections. This is really great. Overhead throws connected to two stage seven points. Back crosses, and a three up back cross 360. So every throw under the leg, that's you'll get in shape working on that. Say, add a jump rope into that as well. That'd be Those are called slap backs right there. Really when he catches, temporarily kind of catches the club on the other end that he normally catches, just slaps it back. Whirlwind. All three clubs up and a 360 under each club, essentially accomplishing a 1080 under one throw. There's some body throws. That's what yeah. I was talking about. You can see if he goes for this again. Now he's moving on. Bova will definitely uh, meet the prerequisite for body throws for the show tonight. A half shower, or a shower pattern, actually, with uh, behind-the-back passes. Chin nice rolls. Seer. And he ends with a little bit of the balance of the forehead. Denger. So Denger, once again, using a variety of different tricks there. Some dynamic, some very technical. He used the balance as well as we see the replay here, Jason. Probably as varied as Ben Thompson, but completely different kinds of moves. Was that three up back cross, 360. Our final competitor in the three club. And it's the every, uh, every throw Roman under the leg. Shanko. All right, I'll leave Galchenko warming up here. This is just the warm-up, but already those body throws, that's what I'm talking about. That's a little bit longer than uh, Galchenko likes to warm up. Normally, he'd <laughs> like to get out and go. Yeah. Almost a sundial there is the way he's turning as he's throwing. Yeah, he's the first person I ever saw to do that. Look at that connection, uh, 360 into body throws. I mean, body throws is one of the more, most difficult three-club moves you can do. It's to connect. I was now connecting he's... forward and backward throws, body throws and reverse body throws. I think he's done. Now he's doing oh, a combination oh, wow. of reverse back crosses with reverse body throws. Catching behind his back and then throwing from back to front between the legs. It's almost like he has those things on a string when he gets into the zone like that. Yeah. They come right back to his hands. And this is a very difficult combination right here. Throwing, catching behind the back at the same time. And that's just, well, that's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's the best in the world at what he does. Lovo Galchenko, I mean. Clubs are his discipline, and he's showing and he's, every uh, bit oh, of that right Oh, look at that, right that three up body throw 360. And that's and how he's going to end it right there. And I believe I he <laughs> made up that. He, I think he just made that up at the, he at the very end. He winged that one at he, the end. He needed to kill a little time. and uh, What an impressive display oh. of juggling there. All, all the different disciplines and the, that Galchenko had going on. If you want to watch take this us here. Watch this connection. Two stage, 720. Look at how he swings his leg around to get right into the position for those uh, those body throws. 
and that's just so easy for him. But that uh, don't let that fool you. That is one of the most difficult three club moves. Third that place, could take you years to Jack learn. Denger. Second place, Ben Thompson. And with first place, Velva Galchenko. No surprise there as Galchenko takes home the three club championship there in the freestyle round. So there you have it, the final results from the 2011 World Juggling Federation Freestyle Battles. I'm sure you've never seen juggling like that before. So the next time you see some dude juggling while eating an apple, ask him if he can do a DB97531 without the apple. Just ask him, he's gonna go ahead and appreciate that one. This has been Mike Wimmacher and Jason Garfield, and we thank you all for watching. But don't go anywhere, because coming up next on ESPN3 is the Major League Combat Finals, the most deadly juggling you'll ever see. Five on five, team death matches right here, coming up next. This has been a production of the World Juggling Federation in association with ESPN Incorporated.